Hey everybody, it's your girl Alicia back with another video. So today I did not enter in my trade. Yes, I know we talked about it. I told you guys that I have a hard time entering into my trades and today is just a prime example of that. So also update i think i'm gonna be doing a youtube video every day of the week except for saturday and sunday possibly just giving an update on the market and kind of giving you an inside of what i see in the market throughout the day especially because since we're just trading the morning session i think it's kind of important to always do a daily recap and even if I don't take a trade, I'm going to be doing a daily recap for you, for me, just because I find it helps, you know, repetitive information, getting it all in. It's really good. It helps. And yeah, I think I'll be doing that. So I'm excited. And yeah, today is prime example of me not getting into my trade. I know I'm so you know, I was feeling upset about it, but I let myself sit with that emotion of feeling upset. And I just, I believe that we have to let our emotions out and we have to let our emotion, like we have to feel our emotions and then we have to let them go, learn from them. Yes, so even though I am learning to get into my trades, I still have days like this where I see my setup form and then as soon as I'm about to enter the trade, I'm like, what if it goes the other way? What if it does this? But that is why we have a stop loss. So yes, join me with my journey of figuring that out. And yeah, I'm gonna give us a market recap. So I know I didn't make a YouTube video yesterday, but I'm gonna be doing a market recap every day until we pass the top step challenge and then who knows maybe even after the top step challenge so if you guys like these videos if you like the recaps let me know in the comments and i will definitely keep on doing them so let's get right into it but first coffee cheers all right so as we all know we like to start on that daily chart but I'm going to just go to the weekly chart really quick because I want to kind of show you where my mind's been with the weekly chart throughout the week. So we obviously had this weekly fair value gap right here that we talked about last week that ICT had talked about. And last week we actually filled it in right here. So I was like, okay, like, yes, those levels are still important, but I can take this off my chart knowing that we came down and filled it in and had a closed candle. But if you notice this vo weekly volume imbalance, we did not have a close of this weekly volume imbalance. So where my mind gravitated to was, all right, one of two things. We could have closed this weekly fair value gap, traded into the weekly volume imbalance and went higher. However, we can see we didn't break this weekly high this week. And my second prediction would have been, okay, we want to see a close of this weekly volume imbalance and essentially, like I would love to see this just close a nice weekly candle just straight through this weekly volume imbalance and have a close below it so then we're filling it in now it is only 12 p.m eastern standard time so we still have like four hours left five hours left of the market being open so i mean we could potentially trade higher and above this weekly volume imbalance and not close it in but the chances of that happening are not very likely, I would like to say. <laughs> Who knows, it could turn around on me and totally just, but that'll be a problem. Not even a problem. That'll be something that we look into if it happens. All right. 
so that's the weekly chart that's like my kind of analysis i was like okay we're gonna break that high we might want to try and close in the weekly volume imbalance all right let's go down to the daily so the daily here we have this remaining daily fair value gap open i had this on my charts we came down we actually traded inside of it today i'll be honest with you i didn't think the market would move this much today considering it is friday but i did want to see sells right i did want to see that weekly volume imbalance stay closed and one way to make sure that happens is to go lower right so we did go lower we are trading inside of this daily fair value gap now and basically i saw okay we had this i'll zoom in a bit we had this fair value gap here that's being created on the daily chart however we did trade nice trade down and i'm gonna jump over well i'll jump over in an hour but i'm sure you noticed my lines before those were like my new week opening lines but i'll talk about that in a minute i just want to say our levels was this daily fair value gap i wanted to see this as a one hour fair value gap i wanted to see it trade down into here and essentially just go lower if we are gonna stay below this weekly volume imbalance. So one hour. Okay, we have the weekly volume imbalance here. We have this one hour fair value gap over here. As you can see, I extended this and I wanted to see the market trade through it. I really like this fair value gap because we had like we had a run down and a run up, but we left almost, we basically we have a one hour fair value gap, but we also on the previous candle that was there, we also had a fair value gap. So like this space, this in the market, yeah, we had a run through it, but we didn't like trade through it. So I was like, okay, this seems like a pretty respectable level. Then of course we had the, I had these New York AM lows. And if we go down into the 15 minute time frame, I also seen, so we have those relative equal lows that we have yet to hit right down there. But we also had these relative equal lows right here. So even though the market did slightly take this low out they're pretty relatively equal so i just marked it out as a relative equal low we'll just go back up to the one hour really quick see if i missed anything honestly it looks pretty good on the one hour time frame i didn't want to see us trade into this weekly volume imbalance anymore and this 15 minute fair value gap or the 15 minute fair value gap i really didn't want to see it trade it to so I just had it marked out I was like okay if we do go higher I do not want it to go higher than this area before we trade lower I mean anything could happen but that was just like the worst case scenario before I had to switch my directional bias and my directional bias was of course shorts now when we were here we did have a little bit of a kind of back and forth movement this morning. We didn't have a very like large range. I mean, we did take out these relative equal highs during London. We have these relative equal lows down here. We came back up. Now, here's the cool thing that I wanted to talk about. You see this run right here? Well, on the one hour chart, we have a run i wanted to potentially see these london highs taken out before we traded lower just to get like more buy side liquidity taken but if we look at these bodies look at how they're all closed right here and then this candle trades right to the consequent encroachment of this one hour wick I will just draw it out really quick. You see how it traded right to the consequent encroachment of that one hour wick. 
right here before we moved lower. So I was like, okay, I see this happening. And we took out the buy side liquidity from the highs of the bodies of these candles. And ICT does talk about like best case scenario, this would be taken out. But considering we didn't make it that high, we can still go with the thoughts that this is enough of a liquidity grab for us to move lower. So going in with that thought, after we opened at 9.30, we took out this uh, buy side liquidity at 9.30, took out this right high right here, traded higher, and then of course moving lower. Now, this box right here is actually our five minute fair value gap. Look at that. So when I'm trading, I actually have like another monitor right here. So in the corner, I have the one hour, 15 minute, five minute, and then the one minute. And then I trade on my laptop here and it's usually set on the five minute or the one minute time frame. So I can look and see like what's happening during the one hour and the 15 minute and the five minute and the one minute simultaneously. <laughs> So I can I can see that all oh right we actually came up to the consequent encroachment on the one hour, taking out taking out that buy side liquidity on the five minute here we traded right into that fair value gap perfect, I mean, so I can kind of see what's happening on multiple time frames at once, which is something I actually really enjoy and I would probably recommend because before I would switch over in different tabs but. Just even the switching over at different tabs isn't enough, I don't think. So like having like even just having your screen set to four different charts so then you can see what's happening in multiple time frames. I think that's really important. And then I also have a two different tabs. I have the one tab for this chart right here. I'll show you really quick. This is the Nasdaq five minute and this is the Dow five minute. Basically, I'm watching to see if they take out their highs and what they're also doing while we're trading the AS. So I don't actually trade the Dow or the NAS, but I like watching them to make sure that we are kind of going in the same direction. So this is a different tab I'll have open. And then I also, so this is the one I'll be trading on. I also have the New Week Opening Gaps tab open. And I just wanted to get them off my chart. I leave the this week's new week opening gap. So of course it's like up here. I leave that for simplicity, but having all of these charts, all of these lines on my charts is a little messy and I didn't really like it. So I was like, okay, we need to put it just onto one separate chart. But on this chart, I have all of the new week opening gaps and something I wanted to talk about yesterday or today about the new week opening gaps is one of the reasons I didn't take a trade yesterday was because look, we are literally trading inside of these new week opening gaps. So I mean, yeah, there was, there was potential. And then in the afternoon after the news, we definitely saw like a nice run lower. And that would have been something really awesome to grab potentially. But the fact that we kept going like from these key levels and when they're in one area, like the new week opening gaps, it tends to consolidate a bit more. So you, we, we could even see it like it's going from the high to the low to the consequent encroachment, to the low to the high, you know, so it consolidates a bit more. And yes, you can trade the high or the low of the new week opening gap, but I personally like trade creating trending markets. So even though we have all this back and forth movement, I expected it to happen that way because we were in this area, which had a lot of new week opening gaps in one area. And that's just kind of the market tipping its hand, telling us, hey, you know, probably going to be some con consolidation here because we have a lot of, you know, <laughs> we have a lot of levels to trade back and forth from. So just, just wait. Like, let's break out of these levels. So it was nice to see it actually break out here. And then, of course, we dropped lower today. So yesterday I was happy I didn't get in a trade. But today I did have a setup and 
I didn't take it and I even knew what was going on. I understood. We went up to the, took up the buy side liquidity, traded above the 930 or traded, took it out after 930. We came up perfectly into this five minute fair value gap right here. Like, look at that. That is perfect. Like this low, the candle is 4302.25. The high of this candle is 4302.25. Like you cannot get any more perfect than that. When I saw this happen, I was like, okay, something's about to go down. Yes, we didn't take out these London session lows, but on the one hour chart, we can see that it did come up to the consequent encroachment of the one hour wick while taking out the bodies of those candles high. And now we have this perfect, uh, perfect retracement and I was like, okay, like something's about to go down. I am in it for the sells. So I go down to the one minute. All right. And then of course, you know, we have our time frame. So we like trading the ICT silver bullet 10 to 11. We have this movement happen here, comes down, trades back up into this one minute fair value gap right at 9.55. So five minutes before we can enter into the market. And that's fine, you know, like it's honestly, this is a great entry because one, we have this, we took out buy side liquidity, traded into a higher time frame, fair value gap, boom. Broke market structure here, had our displacement run, broke market structure again here on a deeper level, have this fair value gap right here. And if you can see, look at how we traded right above the opening range gap settlement price. So even just having that consequent or that confluence of getting into this fair value gap is something to point out. Of course, it was at 9.55, so I didn't get in the trade because our rules state that we take a trade from 10 to 11. <laughs> the fair value gap doesn't have to form in that time, but us actually trading has to. So that's totally fine. My objective was these relative equal lows down here and then the fill of this one hour fair value gap i did want to see the daily fair value gap traded too but i mean i wasn't expecting it to trade that far for one so the fact that we even got down to that level is pretty amazing this was my trade right here that i didn't get into because i have to work i have to work on that so i saw this setup form we obviously had our higher time frame objective reached, which was, of course, we were trading into the liquidity, into the consequent encroachment of the one hour wick. And now we have this five minute fair value gap form and we traded into it perfectly. We had a break in market structure. We had our displacement run. Now we have this one minute fair value gap right here. Our objective is more than 10 points away, which was just the fill of the one hour fair value gap. We had yet to reach the relative equal lows. So, I mean, this was all like amazing. I mean, it was our run on liquidity was right there. We hadn't taken out the lows yet. We we're trying to fill in this one hour fair value gap and this was the trade. And then I just could not enter. I could not enter. I went down, traded up, boom short right there and then i would have probably taken up my take profit right below these relative equal lows because that would have been five points and then that one hour fair value gap fill which would have been nice to see i wouldn't have held it on for that long to be honest with you i'm trying to take profit at five points hoping it goes to 10 points so just below would have been five points you know Five point run right there. And then of course our actual draw on liquidity was the fill of the one hour fair value gap. Now we came in, we could have, we had two opportunities to really get into that market, to get into this one minute fair value gap. And I've set it up so my trade of it's like linked to my trading view. And I just could not answer it. What was going through my mind? Well, I was like, okay, what if this trade turns around on me? What if I'm wrong? You know, all of these things I literally wrote down when over here, I was thinking, 
not ideal to get into the market. I'm not 100% sure of this trade, and maybe that's just my mind getting to me, but that's why I didn't enter. So even just having like those doubts and not being 100% sure of the trade, Obviously, is something I have to work on because one, the trade worked out. And you know what? Like, the trades usually work out. I mean, I've put a lot of work into this, and you've seen my trades before. I mean, I've put a lot of work into this. And like, I had the analysis and I had the objectives and I had it all. But for some reason, I just like couldn't enter. And it's just something I need to work on getting better at. And if you have any tips that could help me, please let me know because I'm struggling over here. <laughs> it's awesome to see the trade work out and I'm super grateful that it did work out. And I'm super, super grateful that the objectives that I had wanted it to see it reach, it got reached. But I didn't put on any risk. I didn't enter in the trade and I had the opportunity to like, I saw it happen. I was like, okay, I'm going to get in this trade. And then it just kind of froze. So I'm obviously working through that. We did make one trade this week, which is amazing. It's a huge leap for me. But I think the one thing I need to focus on is just simply entering in the trade. The one thing that should be easy is pushing the button. And it's just not easy for me. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, I did want to just kind of recap the markets and show you guys this trade. And of course, obviously now we have reached down into this daily fair value gap again. I do not wanna see the market trade higher and close in this area. But again, it is only 12.27 now, so I, we could see stuff happen. If anything, I wanted to continue lower down into this New York AM session lows and relative equal lows and completely fill in this daily fair value gap. But it is Friday and the markets moved quite some this morning. So I don't know if we'll be getting too much more movement, but yeah, I'm again, I'm super happy that the trade worked out the way I wanted it to work out. I am super grateful that I can see these things happen. And now I just need to work on actually entering the trade. So yes, if you have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments, please, because your girl is struggling a little. Anyways, that is it for me. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Let me know if you want to see more of these daily recap videos. And yeah, I really love making them and I hope you enjoy watching them and just let me know what you think. So. I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Try to get out, enjoy some of that nice weather before it goes away. I know it's gonna snow next week here in Canada, so <laughs> I'm gonna try to get out and at least go for a walk or something because it's gonna be cold soon. Anyways, I will talk to you all soon and I'll see you next week, Monday. We'll be doing a recap, so. Have a good rest of your day, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Bye now.